Today, we're going to walk through the layout of the panels and menus in Spectronon. This video will cover the general layout, so if you'd like to see how to connect an imager and collect data, please see our quick start video. We will cover the main menu, the toolbar functions, and the panel functionality throughout this video. Spectronon's main menu is found horizontally across the top of the window. Just below the main menu is the toolbar. To start, uh, I will open a saved data cube by selecting the file menu item, then open data cube and selecting the cube that I want to open. The upper left panel is the resource tree. It allows you to navigate all open data cubes and renderings. Below the resource tree is the resource info panel. This contains the path to the cube and any information about what rendering is being used or information contained within the header file of the data cube. The lower left panel contains data information about selected pixels as well as the status information whenever a plugin is run. You can click on the tabs within these panels to access the information that you need. The center panel is where the sensor map is displayed during focusing and where all data cube renderings or color maps will appear. Currently we're looking at an RGB false color image render of a data cube. The upper right panel is the plots panel. By default, it shows the spectrum for the pixel selected from within the image render panel. The three colored vertical lines represent the bands used for RGB values within the false color image that is being rendered. The X tab will show a plot from the image render panel defined by the horizontal cross section of the inspection tool. The three lines we see represent the intensity from the respective RGB channels. The Y tab shows the same data as the X tab, but for the vertical dimension of the inspection tool. Finally, the Plots tab shows data for specific user plugins. In any of the Plot tabs, you can zoom in on a feature using the scroll wheel of your mouse or by using the Zoom tool. We can also click and drag to zoom into a specific region of interest. Clicking the inspection tool somewhere on the plot reveals the wavelength and the Y value of that point in the panel's upper right corner. The bottom right panel is the controls panel. This panel will change depending on what type of analysis you are running, but when an RGB render is selected in the resource tree, there are two tabs available. The RGB tab shows three sliders used to select which spectral channels are used to create the false color image shown in the center panel. The contrast tab allows for nonlinear adjustment of the brightness of the render to help identify regions of interest. It's worth noting here that these sliders do not change the data in the data cube itself. They only change the rendering of the data in the center panel. You can generate new renders by right-clicking on a data cube and selecting New Image. When multiple renders are generated, they will appear as tabs at the top of the center panel. Separate tabs will be created for renders from different cubes as well as multiple renders from the same cube. If you want to export a render as an image file, right-click it in the resource tree and select Export Image. Moving on to the menu toolbar, File gives you access to the Open Data Cube and Open Spectrum options. It also contains the Preferences menu item, which lets you control how Spectronon looks, as well as gives you access to uh, imager parameters when a camera is loaded. The Data Cube drop-down menu gives you the same access as right-clicking a cube in the resource tree. New image lets you generate a new render, and new cube is where most of the analysis features are. We will get into those analysis features in a different video. Spectrum is where you'll find all the manipulation tools for spectra generated from the cubes. Selection shows all the options available when you right-click a selected region in the render panel. The plots menu item allows you to export specific tabs from the plot panel as either images or text files, as well as set parameters for the plot tabs, like the limits for the uh, X and Y axes. The spectrometer menu allows you to search for imagers or stages should they become disconnected, as well as give you options for collecting and calibrating your imager. Window gives you options to hide or show specific panels, and finally help provides links to our FAQ and user guides. It also allows you to check for new releases of Spectronon and shows you your current working version of Spectronon. Moving on to the control panel, we'll find all of the tools that allow us to visualize and manipulate the data in our data cube. The first option is the arrow if you want no tools to be active. The crosshair or the inspection tool 
allows you to select a specific pixel within a render and display information about it. Right-clicking with the inspection tool enables you to generate a point spectrum or copy a point spectrum to the clipboard. As stated before, the vertical and horizontal lines generated by the crosshair tool are also used in plotting the X and Y cross sections in the upper right plots panel. The Select Rectangle option allows you to select multiple pixels at once to perform an analysis, like a mean spectrum. The Lasso tool also allows you to select multiple pixels, but in any shape you want. You're not limited to a rectangle. The Ruler tool allows you to measure the distance between two pixels. The Flood Fill tool will select a group of contiguous, spectrally similar pixels. The Modified Flood Fill tool will search the entire cube for spectrally similar pixels, whether they are contiguous or not. For all the selection tools, you can hold Control and select multiple regions at once. To deselect, right-click within the render and select the Select None option. The Pan tool allows you to move the render when you are zoomed in. The Zoom tools will zoom in and out respectively. Uh, your mouse scroll wheel can do this even when zoom is not selected. The Expand tool will return to the default render geometry. The Rotate and Flip buttons will transform the render respectively. The right end of the toolbar is used for data acquisition purposes and will be grayed out unless an imager is connected to the computer. These buttons are used to access the focusing modes, uh, choosing an appropriate integration time, recording dark and white references, and choosing the number of line scans as well as initiating a new scan. Please see the quick start video for more information about what those panels look like. As always, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, anyone on the team for clarification and help navigating Spectronon or getting started with your data analysis. Have a great day.